Hello and welcome back. This is another in the series of videos on using NIST DTSA2. In this one I'm going to go ahead and try and explain why, um, uh, what uh, peak shape references are and why they're necessary. So, um, regardless of, uh, of how the software uh, developer designs the software, whether it's a commercial uh, EDS package or whether it's uh, something like uh, NIST DTSA2, in the end, uh, all of uh, X-ray microanalysis involves comparing unknown spectra uh, back to some f model or measured um, standard spectrum. And um, this, this process uh, usually involves a, uh, a spectrum fitting. So uh, um, the unknown spectrum is fit with uh, spectra representing the various elements in the unknown. And from those fits, the composition of the unknown is determined. Well, um, often you want to uh, quantify a, a material like uh, K240, which is a, which is a glass. Uh, it's, a, it's a complex glass. It contains a number of different elements. And uh, we're going to focus on the, uh, the barium and titanium because the barium and titanium, particularly in this region, have a, 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 a particularly nasty overlap. Well, a good strategy when you're quantifying a spectrum is to choose a standard that's similar in composition to the unknown because um, in this way we minimize the number of or the size of the uh, corrections, the matrix corrections which need to be applied to actually determine the composition. So uh, we could choose something like uh, bonitoite for example which uh, is now displayed as the red spectrum and you, as you can see the, the relative intensity in this region is, is very similar. Um, and uh, the K240 differs in as much as it has some additional zirconium, magnesium, and zinc. So we're good, we would like to use something like benitoite as a standard. But benitoite has a problem. And that problem is that in this region particularly, and I'll zoom into this region, there's this interference. So not only is there a barium peak here, but there's a titanium peak right next to it. And so to extract the information about the barium intensity and the titanium intensity is challenging. In fact, I mean, if we were to try and do this by eye, we would probably uh, just give up. It's, it's, it's too difficult to do by eye. But the, the fact of the matter is we can fit uh, a pure titanium spectrum and a and a, uh, a barium spectrum without any interferences in this region to this peak shape. And we can extract very, very precisely, very accurately, the information about how much intensity is barium and how much intensity is titanium. So we might use a, spectra, a titanium spectrum that looks something like this. This is a pure titanium spectrum. And we might use something like this. Uh, the the uh, uh, green spectrum is now uh, a, a material called Sanbornite, which is a, a barium silicate. So it, it doesn't actually contain the titanium. And in fact, you can see that if you compare the bonitoite to the Sanbornite. You can see that they're actually uh, slightly different from each other in as much as the uh, red one has some additional intensity where you'd expect to see the titanium. So we can fit these uh, other spectra to our standard. So we're going to call bonitoite our standard, and we're going to call these other spectra, the, the titanium providing the pure titanium, clean titanium peak, and the sanbornite containing uh, not pure barium, but at least barium in a situation in which there are no interferences between barium and any other element. Uh, we're going to call these two things peak shape references. And these 
uh, particular ones are, g are good peak shape references for these particular range of, 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 uh, of energies. And so um, uh, uh, we will use them. How will we use them? Well, we're going to fit. At least this is what's going on in the background behind the so in the software. We're going to fit the titanium and the Sanbornite to the Benitoite. And we're essentially going to calibrate them. So we're going to say, you know, uh, um, we can create the Benitoite by a certain fraction of this intense, the uh, Sanbornite intensity and a certain fraction of the titanium intensity. Okay, then we're going to fit the titanium and sanbornite are peak shape references to our unknown. And we're going to get another set of uh, relative intensities. And it turns out if we take those two calibrated relative intensities, we can actually determine the amount, the relative amount of uh, barium in the K240 relative to the benitoite and the relative amount of uh, uh, titanium in the K4240 relative to the benitoite. So essentially, what the peak shape references allow us to do is to use a complex material like the benitoite to quantify another complex material. So could we have just used the Sanbornite and the titanium directly to quantify the K240? Absolutely, we certainly could have done that. Why is that less good in many situations? Well, in many situations, um, the, uh, the, the, the nice clean references um, are not as, uh, require a larger matrix correction, so they are going to be uh, likely slightly less accurate than if we used a similar material. So the use of, of complex standards is not necessary. You could always choose uh, simple compounds, and, and that's often a very good strategy, um, in which case no references are required. In fact, what, what I would say is that the standard uh, is, in fact, the reference in the sense that you can fit the standard directly to the unknown. However, there are situations, and uh, these are not infrequent, in which a reference is necessary. Uh, one thing that uh, is worth clarifying is that really the references are only necessary for the standard in the sense that if, if the standard has no interferences, then it can be to fit directly to the unknown. It's only in the situation in which the standard has interferences that you um, need to use a peak shape reference. So um, how do you know whether you need a peak shape reference? Well, one quick way is to go to the standard bundle, make a standard bundle. And if you specify what the material is, Benitoite is in the database, so we don't need to redefine it. Um, it will tell you on the second page here under references what references are required. And in fact, as we discussed here, that uh, titanium K family and the barium L family references are needed for those, as we discussed. But also, it turns out that there's an interference between the titanium L and oxygen K families. So we could um, read in a titanium reference for this. We're good there. And an oxygen reference, so I'm going to use SiO2 because the oxygen is well separated from the silicon, and so there's no risk of an interference there. And then finally, I'm going to use this Sanbornite for my reference for barium. And barium, silicon, and oxygen in Sanbornite. So when we specify a reference, a reference, we don't actually need to know the composition of the material. So um, 
um, it's really only being used for the uh, shape information. And uh, so you can use materials that are e either not are beam sensitive or are even not uh, necessarily flat and polished so long as the shape of the peak hasn't, isn't modified. So this is important, particularly in somewhere like a, a barium where finding a good uh, peak shape reference can be really difficult, particularly for the barium M lines, which we haven't discussed in here. So, um, save. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save these, and there we go. All right, so uh, just to give a little bit of insight, I'd, I'd mentioned a little bit about why, um, for example, SiO2. So I said, here, so we're going to zoom in 5 kV on SiO2. I'd said that there was a sufficient separation between these two. Well, uh, the software knows precisely what that means. It's a little bit more difficult to um, say that precisely um, by um, I, let's say, or, or to know specifically. That's why I, spec I, I suggest using the uh, uh, standard bundler as your uh, determinant about whether a reference is necessary. Um, what the software is looking for is a sufficiently large region of background between the peaks. And a sufficiently large region of background is about one full width half max. So it needs about one full width half max over this side and one full width half max over this side. And to get an intuitive feel of why that's necessary, um, it's important to understand that to measure the height of a peak, you need to know what the background level is. And uh, the style of fitting that we use is called filter fitting. And so uh, when you filter it, um, you need about one full width half max on each side to make a sufficiently precise measurement of the background. So when I say uh, references is necessary because two peaks are uh, interfering, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're literally interfering. It means that they're sufficiently close that there may be a problem. So give you an example of a spectrum that is sufficiently close that it does represent a problem. Um, we can look at uh, K412. So here is uh, K412. I'll put the markers appropriate for it on. And um, we can see here that we have magnesium, aluminum, and silicon. And while they don't interfere in the sense that the peaks aren't extremely overlapped, there really isn't any background in between them. And so we would need separate references for magnesium, aluminum, and silicon if we wanted to use this as a standard. On the other hand, if we look at its partner, K411, the same glass but without aluminum, um, the lack of aluminum between here would leave a sufficiently large background that we wouldn't need references for this. So the takeaway is that um, it can sometimes be difficult to determine whether a peak shape reference is necessary for a complex standard. Um, so your best bet is always to use the standard bundler, which uh, understands the algorithms that uh, DTSA2 uses in the quantification process and can tell you unambiguously whether a uh, peak shape reference will be necessary. Thanks for uh, uh, listening to this and I uh, hope this has been helpful. Um, hope to uh, see you again in some of the other videos.